Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you the similarity between the energy equation and the F equals MA equation, and that they both will give you the same equation kinematics. Eventually, we'll then show you why we can use Lagrangian to solve kinematics problems. So what we're going to do here is first show you what the equation is that we're going to derive from using the kinetic energy change plus the potential energy change being equal to zero. That comes from the original energy equation when we assume that the work input to the system is equal to zero and the energy lost by the system is equal to zero, probably due to friction or something like that. So we can then say that the difference in the kinetic energy plus the difference in potential energy equals zero, resulting in this equation right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write it as follows. So we, we have one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared plus mgy final minus mgy initial is equal to zero. And then of course we factor out what's common. So we get one half m times v squared minus v initial squared plus mg times y minus y initial is equal to zero. So where do we go from here? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to solve that equation for v final. Essentially, that's what we want. We want to find out what the final velocity is based on the initial conditions. So first of all, notice that the m's cancel out on, bo on both sides, so we can get rid of the m. And then we can probably multiply everything by 2. If we do that, we get v squared minus v initial squared uh, plus 2g times y minus y initial equals zero. So now we're going to move this and this to the other side. So we have v squared is equal to, moving this across becomes positive v initial squared. And this, well, let's see here, that would become negative, but we can make it positive by switching these two around. So we get plus 2g times y initial minus y equal zero. And there's our equation of kinematics. Doesn't depend on time. It only depends on the initial velocity, the final velocity, the initial height, and the final height. Remember, this is a particle under the influence of gravity. So now we're going to do the same over here, F equals ma. And of course, the force due to gravity is minus mg. The force is downward. And we're going to let g equal a positive 9.8 meters per second squared, like this so that the negative is necessary because g is considered a positive quantity. So the negative means the force acting in negative direction. And of course, a can be written as dv dt. So now we want an equation describing the velocity. So what we can do here is we can get rid of the m on both sides. We can write that dv, and I'll go ahead and do it over here. We can say then that dv is equal to minus g times dt, minus g times dt by simply getting rid of the m, moving the t, dt across and switching the equation around. And so then I can go ahead and integrate both sides like this. And if I integrate this, I get velocity. If I integrate this, I get minus g times t plus a constant of integration. Of course, that constant of integration is equal to initial velocity when t is equal to zero, which means that we can then write that v is equal to v sub naught minus g times t. There we go. Now we have a second equation that we can derive by saying, let's see here, where do we start? Uh, let's see. Ah, I can start with this one. I can say that dy dt is equal to v. That's the change in the height with respect to time is equal to v. And of course, v is equal to this, which means that this is equal to v initial minus g times t. And then if I move the dt to the other side, I can say that dy is equal to v initial minus g times t multiplied times dt. And now I can integrate both sides. And the integral of dy is simply going to be y. And the integral of this is going to be v initial t minus g t squared over 2 plus, again, a constant of integration. And that constant will be the initial height when t is equal to 0. So we can write that y is equal to y initial plus v initial times time minus 1 half g t squared. And there's my second equation. Now, 
What am I going to do next? Well, let's see here. What we're going to do now, because we're trying to show that this equation will give us this, just like this equation will give you this. So now the next thing we should do is we should square this equation on both sides. So if we square this equation on both sides, we get v squared is equal to square on the right side will give us v initial squared minus 2gtv initial plus g squared t squared, like that. So I simply took that, took that equation and squared both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 2g out of the last two terms. So this can be written as v squared is equal to v initial squared. And notice it's beginning to look a little bit more like that. Factor out a, hmm, should I factor out a minus 2g? Let's do that. Minus 2g. And then I'm left with a v initial t. And since I factor out a, a, a 2, I have to then have, and a minus, I need a minus 1 half. I factor out one of the g, g t squared, like this. All right, now notice that this right here is the same as what I have over here. So if I take this equation and I write it as y minus y sub naught is equal to v initial t minus one half g t squared, and then I replace what's here with what's there, which is basically this, then I can take this equation and write it as v squared is equal to v initial squared minus 2g times y minus y initial. And then to get rid of the negative, because I don't have a negative there, I've made that a positive and changed the signs right here. So I can say that v squared equals v initial squared plus 2g times, switch these around, y initial minus y. And notice that this is the exact same equation that I got over here, the exact same equation describing the velocity in the beginning, at the end, the position in the beginning, at the end, and I get the very same equation by using the energy equation or by using Newton's F equals ma. So now you can see that I can solve the equation using the energy equation, I can solve the equation using F equals ma, whatever is easiest. What we're going to show you now is that essentially the Lagrangian, which is the integrand of the equation that we use to calculate the action, is really a good way to solve all kinds of problems that are very difficult to solve using F equals ma. And so that's where we're going to go next, but at least you can see that the force and energy equations essentially lead you to the same path and the same way of solving the problem. And that is how it's done.